Uh, I think Canada will, will vigorously make the argument uh, that NAFTA has worked well for the three countries over the last 20 years, and that as a consequence of that, uh, we effectively have uh, an integrated supply chain and manufacturing community among the United States, Mexico, and Canada, and that Canada should be given the same amount of time to to bring any issues to the table as Mexico uh, would. But but I know Canada does not want to be left on the sidelines of a potential agreement. And as you've referenced, I think many in Congress want to see Canada included because they are not only our largest economic right. partner, but one of our most reliable strategic partners as well. So, Jimmy, is Congress going to reassert, reassert its authority over trade here? Uh, clearly, members of Congress are frustrated. They've been left out of this process. But do you actually expect them to do anything? Uh, yeah, they are frustrated, uh, and there have been some efforts to limit uh, limit the president's power, for instance, which would be a, a congressional reassertion of power that's really faded over recent decades. Uh, they haven't gone too far. I, I, I think what's interesting is that, and, and you know, you know, kind of, you know, circling back to what Phil was talking about, uh, just because you have an agreement in principle doesn't mean there's an agreement. Uh, there's details we don't know. There's side agreements we don't know. Even if the U.S. and Canada come to an agreement by the end of this week. Uh, that's not the ball game. There could still be a lot of negotiations and haggling after this week, uh, you know, push, pushing any final agreement further down the track. And listen, and there is no guarantee, speaking of Congress, that they're going to go for this. Uh, this is this this could take some time. It can move us into next year with a new Congress. Uh, NAFTA could be with us for some time. The the original NAFTA. Right. So, uh, Mr. Ambassador, does does that mean uh, Trudeau has leverage here or not? I mean, the, walking away at this stage, uh, does he put the president uh, in a box given some of the, uh, uh, the dotted I's and cross T's they need to handle with Congress? Well, I, I want to be careful. I think they, but look, the, the reality, Phil, is, look, we both need one another. I mean, I know there's been a lot of frustration over NAFTA, and in fairness, our administration address the issues of, of modernizing NAFTA through the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And I think the greatest leverage that, that, that Canada and Mexico both have is that with the United States unilaterally withdrawing from that agreement, uh, the other 11 countries have signed it, and that gives Canada and Mexico an extraordinary leg up uh, as a second route for American businesses that want to access what's going to be the largest economic zone in the world. But in this case, I think the reality is, notwithstanding their, their personal differences, the U.S. and Canada are one another's largest trading partners. Our steel, aluminum, auto manufacturing companies are all mutually invested in one another. And hopefully we can find a way to get this resolved. But I do want to echo what Jimmy said. We forget Congress constitutionally retrains authority over entering foreign uh, trade economic agreements. And I think they're going to have the final word on what this final agreement looks like and whether or not it meets the, the litmus test uh, of, of uh, at least Ambassador being as good as it's been. Ambassador, what do you think of the deal that's been struck with Mexico? Uh, does it make sense well, to you? you? Know, is it something you, you know? I, I, you know, I, 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 I'm going to be like Jimmy, but I'll say what I, you know, the, the challenge I have is we don't know the details. Um, and I know Ambassador Lighthizer and his team are working very hard. Uh, but we have an unfortunate present precedent of this particular president announcing agreements, as he did after the G20 and NATO, in which, you know, we basically had a pronouncement without any real substance. So I, I want to reserve judgment until the talks wrap up uh, this week and we have a fuller idea of what, in fact, has been accomplished and what's been agreed to. Yeah. But don't, yeah. the, don't, don't yeah. the market strengthen his hand, Jimmy? I mean, this, this market rallies just on word of a deal with Mexico, makes it look more likely that Canada is going to come to the table. Not sure if you can extrapolate what it means for China, but we're seeing record high levels on the S&P and the NASDAQ. Doesn't that back up the president's strategy here? Well, yeah, I mean, it supports the idea that markets would really, really like a deal. Uh, they would, you know, quit trying to, you know, play scenarios about it, withdrawing and what that would mean. So they want that certainty. So uh, to the extent that anything that happens 
uh, boosts that certainty or maintains it, you know, that's that that's great news. And listen, I'm sure markets will love to see Canada sign on to something, even if it's somewhat somewhat vague by the end, end of the week. But there's still going to be certain. Listen, uh, these are not these are not final deals. And just, listen, uh, I mean, just you know, a few hours ago, you had Marco Rubio bad mouthing uh, the U.S. Mexico part of this agreement. Uh, again, just because these countries sign on, Congress does not have to sign on.